We are just talking about this in the break, the fact that it's finally back to normal. You finally have clay season starting. You don't have the restrictions of COVID. What has it been like to kick off this tournament yesterday and finally have the full fan base able to participate? Well, uh, hello, Danny. Uh, thank you for um, for inviting me. Well, I, I, just amazing here. Uh, it's all sunny. People are super excited. And uh, well, before uh, the first day yesterday, we had a full week of uh, what we called opening week, which was the uh, the qualification and the, uh, the all the public, the fans, they could come and attend to the uh, the qualification and to the practices also of the players. So it was. Uh, it was just uh, great. I mean, the the ambience, the atmosphere was uh, very um, very relaxed, and uh, everyone was super excited. So, and for the teams, it was a really good ramp up. You know, we could test things, and we could improve also the experience of the, all the fans coming to the stadium. So, it's just uh, it's just a great time. What what have you changed? What have you done to improve that experience? Well, experience the customers first. They can attend to the practices, you know, of players, and that was just a, a success, uh, for sure. You know, we had uh, a lot of fans coming and could see, you know, all the best players just practice uh, and how do they work with their coach and so on. So that was great, and we've been also working a lot on the on the flows, a lot of the uh, on some kind of animation. You can have some. I don't know how to say it in English, but ephemer tattoo. So it's we we had photo booths all around the stadium. We had Roland Garros in the sky, so you could go up in the air, you know, 50 meters, and just look at the um, at Paris and all the um, the area from the air. So we had a lot of different things, and uh, it was fun and sports. And well, for all people, you know, it was quite cheap because it was 10 mm. euros. Uh, under 25 years old and for the other people it was 20 euros so it was a great way you know to have our stadium very uh, inclusive and very open to all kind of public. Caroline, I, I, I was I feared you might ask me to translate that. My French is appalling, so I'm, I'm glad you did not. Um, look, we, we always see really with with every sport that that sport is political. It's it's inevitable. And yesterday we had the Ukrainian player Kosta Yuk refusing to shake the hand of the Belarusian player Sabalenka. Um, that was largely expected that would happen, but she was met in the crowd with boos. Um, Kosta Yuk criticized the crowd, saying that they should feel embarrassed. Well, what do you make of the episode? Was it wrong, do you think, for the fans? in the crowd to boo the Ukrainian player? Well, um, the thing is that, you know, we have an entry form and players are, when they entry the, the tournament, they have to respect certain rules. So uh, this is what we're looking at. But, you know, well, the fans are fans and it's all about emotion and you can't really say anything about what the fans, you know, are, are, are feeling or how do they react. And we don't really, I mean, that's your explanation, but, you know, for now, it's uh, this is how it is. It's the fan. You know, we we want this open to be all about emotion and sports. In the end, it's about emotion. So um, this is what I can say. And I mean, it, also in, in in terms of, of the fanship, we, we've seen the king of the clay. He's he's been absent from Roland Garros and Nadal for the first time since 2005. Who takes his place as that name recognition that gets people to watch Roland Garros? That gets Everyone excited because of just his pure domination on the clay court. Uh, sorry, I didn't get the question. Was it about Rafa and the fact that he's yes. not here? Okay. Yeah. Uh, See, so you 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 knew it was coming, Caroline. You didn't even need me to ask it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. Well, it's uh, for us. It's uh, it's a great sadness, of course. And I can tell you that you know when the announcement was done. I mean, the teams were really sad. But then you know the tournament is the tournament and. Uh, well, everybody's saying that it's uh, a lot more open. And, uh, well, you know, if you, you might want to ask Amelie Moresmo about what she thinks. And, you know, because in the end, I mean, it's a, a more, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's something, you know, but uh, from a sports point of view, I think I'm not exactly the right person, you know, to talk about that. <laughs>
<laughs> Fair enough. I mean, but just in, in terms of, of the success of the sport, the popularity of the sport, isn't it important we get kind of a generational shift? I know when it comes to the men's play, um, Alcaraz is going to be challenging Djokovic this time around. He's a 20-year-old man instead of a 37-year-old man. In terms of fan engagement, isn't it important to have a, a new generation of tennis stars come up into the headlines? Well, what I can say that from the French Tennis Federation, you know, our mission is really to open up the uh, the, the tennis uh, practice and we want to be super inclusive. And this is really our key mission. So, of course, it's great, you know, to have uh, like a new generation coming to, uh, to play at Roland Garros and being, you know, with, I mean, they come and, I mean, if you look at Alcaraz, he's super charismatic. But when we look at the fan, you know, it's, uh, I mean, they're all super popular and there's no, I don't, I mean, the way I see things is that the more we open up the stadium, the more we open up the competition, it's just good for us because we want diversity. We want just all kinds of fans, you know, just to, to join this great community of tennis. Mm. Right, and, and that fan base, it's its a lot of women too. And in terms of, of the women's play, there has been a lot of criticism as of late. Last, last year for the French Open, it was about the lack of those primetime slots being given to women. There are 10 primetime night sessions. Uh, just one of them featured a woman. You had an issue with the Italian Open just a week ago in terms of rescheduling women's play to very late at night. Um, what is being done to address some of these issues? Is enough? being done to address this in terms of equality for time and prominence of play between the men and the women's events? Well, today we are uh, we're scheduling two, uh, two match of women and two match of men every day on, you know, Chatrier and Suzanne Lenglen. So that's for sure while the tournament is starting. So, and again, I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, the programmation and the scheduling of matches is super complex. So, um, today, I can't, I can't say more. What I can say is that from the French Tennis Federation and what we're doing for women in sport and in tennis specifically, I mean, we're doing a lot. We have a lot of things. It, it, it starts from like the, uh, the really uh, young girls, you know, um, uh, till 18. And then uh, we want the practice to be uh, for everyone. So we're working on this one. But I mean, here in Hollande, I was this, you know, just a scheduling process and we're working a lot with, uh, I mean, Ameni Moresmo is doing a great job on that. And, uh, well, what I can say today, it's uh, the second day of the tournament and today is going to be our our first night session. But, uh, you know, we have uh, two uh, two games of women and two games of uh, men uh, per day on uh, Chatrier and uh, Longlaine.